wonderful person, this is Anton, and last week the Nobel Assembly in Stockholm finally revealed the winner for the 2025 Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine. And this year's recognition goes to Mary Branko, Frederick Ramsdell, and Shimon Sagaguchi. In this case, for a major contribution that centers on something super important when it comes to microbiology. Something we refer to as the peripheral immune tolerance. And so in this video, let's actually discuss exactly why these scientists won the Nobel Prize and what their really important research taught us about our own physiology and about everything our body goes through when it comes to the immune system. And so let's dive into this and discuss the idea behind the regulatory T cells and how our body deals with a lot of complexity in a relatively simple way. But I guess here let's actually define the problem first, just so that you understand how important this discovery was. And so let's briefly discuss our immune system and how it generally works when it comes to invading viruses and bacteria. But in general, our immune system is a very sophisticated biological masterpiece. Even though we're constantly exposed to a lot of microbes, and a lot of different viruses and fungi, we're still able to survive just fine because of this extremely robust defense system. But its primary job is to recognize foreign invaders, usually viruses or bacteria, but it also has to be able to tell them apart from our own body cells. And the problem here lies in the highly versatile defense mechanism, specifically so-called T-cells. And more specifically, in the way they work and in the way they usually detect various invading pathogens. Now, T cells, which are also known as T lymphocytes, are a type of a white blood cell integral to the immune system. And they essentially protect the body by recognizing and responding to harmful pathogens, by first detecting them, and then once activated, multiplying to form various clones that essentially produce a lot of copies, which then try to attack the pathogens, destroying all of them in the process. In other words, in this image you can kind of see how this works. A T cell discovers some kind of a pathogen, it then alerts the system, and the system starts to produce exactly same T cells to try to find all of these pathogens in the body. But to do this, they use very specialized proteins called T cell receptors. You can see them as these tiny forks in this image. And the thing is, in a normal, non-infected body, pretty much every single one of these cells contains a slightly different T cell receptor. And that's because they are unique sensors. They're built through a very random combinatorial process that in theory can produce trillions and trillions different sensors, relying on a kind of a shotgun approach. Basically here, by just having a diverse amount of these receptors, at least one of them is going to match with some kind of a receptor that either a virus or a bacteria possesses. In other words, their immense diversity makes sure that our body can recognize any pathogen, even from some of the more recently evolved viruses. But this process is kind of costly. And not even costly because you need to produce a lot of these cells, but because sometimes these T-cell receptors may mistakenly attack body's own tissues. And so if left unchecked, these self-reactive cells can actually attack the body itself, leading to the concept we refer to as autoimmune disease. And here this can be anything from rheumatoid arthritis to type 1 diabetes and different types of bowel diseases. And for many years, scientists believed that the kind of a central safeguard against this was something referred to as central tolerance. Basically, a kind of a test performed in the thymus, or an organ inside the chest, where T cells that strongly react with self antigens are usually eliminated. But it was understood that this mechanism was maybe not perfect, and sometimes some of these harmful T cells, or basically T cells that could attack own body, managed to escape the thymus and enter the circulation. And so this led the researchers to a very simple question. How exactly are these escapees controlled? And this is where we start with Shimon Sakaguchi. Back in the 1970s, scientists proposed an explanation, a concept of a specialized T cell that actively suppressed immune response. But there was no clear evidence for any of this, and the idea was largely dismissed by the scientific community, eventually collapsing entirely. But the immunologist from Japan, Shimon Sakaguchi, felt the explanation was sort of incomplete and was actually deeply interested in the mechanism behind this autoimmunity. He was basically interested to find out how exactly these T-cells were eliminated 
and if maybe there was something to this hypothesis, and if there was maybe a way to prove this. And he was inspired by earlier experiments from 1969, which showed that if you were to remove thymus from some of the newborn mice, animals almost immediately and spontaneously developed severe autoimmune diseases. Their entire immune system went into the overdrive and instantly attacked their own organs. The majority of these animals were very sick and could not survive much longer. And so Sakaguchi's crucial insight came in the early 1980s. He experimented by isolating and injecting immune cells from healthy adult mice into some of these thymus-free mice that were already sick. And he discovered that specific T cells from healthy mice could actually prevent or suppress development of autoimmunity. This showed us that there must be some kind of a protective cell type, an immune security guard, in the normal population of T cells. And he spent a very long time trying to find this cell. He was looking for a specific marker for this mysterious suppressive cell by continuously improving the experiments. Now, normally T cells are identified by a protein on their surface with different proteins having different types. For example, we have CD4 for helper T cells and CD8 for killer T cells. And since in his experiments many of the cells used were CD4+, or the cells responsible for the activation of the immune system, he deduced that there must be different kinds of these cells that were still invisible to us. And then, in his now famous study in 1995, Sakaguchi and his team finally defined a new type of T-cells, characterized not only by the CD4 marker, but also by the expression of high levels of a receptor referred to as CD25. So yeah, this is getting kind of complicated with all of these acronyms, but basically he discovered a new receptor that was previously unknown. But more importantly, he physically demonstrated that CD4 plus CD25 T cells were absolutely crucial for maintaining immune self tolerance. He basically revived this concept of the suppressor T cell, but this time with a lot of evidence behind it. And he named these cells T regs, or regularly T cells. The T cells whose only purpose was to find other T cells that might be dangerous to our own bodies. So basically, a kind of a T cell police. But there was still a major piece of a puzzle missing. The definitive molecular signal that controlled these cells. And this is where we have a different team with a different study and a very, very strange mouse. Scruffy mouse. A spontaneously mutant strain of a mouse first discovered in the 1940s during research related to the Manhattan Project. The same project that basically created the nuclear bomb. And well, in this case, male scruffy mice suffered from severe fatal autoimmunity. Their T cells rampaged through their organs, killing them in just a few weeks. They basically had an extreme case of autoimmune disease that seemed to attack multiple organs at once. And in the 1940s, researchers realized that this was surprisingly linked to the X chromosome. But it took approximately 50 years, so here we're talking about the 1990s, when finally molecular genetics caught up and the two other scientists, Mary Bronco and Frederick Ramsdell, who at this time were working at a biotech company developing treatments for the autoimmune diseases, realized that the scruffy mouse offered them a very exciting opportunity. They realized that understanding the molecular cause of this disease could potentially provide us with a lot of insights on how all of this works in terms of genetics. And so, in an ambitious project, they set out to find the specific mutation on the X chromosome which was a very monumental task. Here this was looking for a needle in a gigantic haystack. And eventually this was narrowed down to just 20 genes. And after years and years of meticulous sequencing, in 2001, Bronco and Ramsdell found the answer. They identified a faulty gene, now referred to as the 4cat box P3, or FOXP3 for short. And it was the mutation of this gene that suddenly caused the fatal autoimmune disease in these mice that nobody understood until 2001. And so Bronco and Ramsdell immediately suspected that the Scruffy syndrome was actually kind of equivalent to a rare severe human autoimmune disease also linked to an X chromosome referred to as IPAX, immune dysregulation polyendocrinopathy enteropathy X-linked syndrome, which took me like five minutes to pronounce. But importantly, working with several clinical teams, they were able to physically confirm this, provide enough evidence that this is real, and confirm that the mutation in the human FOXP3 gene also caused IPAX in boys born with this very scary genetic anomaly. This is usually fatal unless treated with stem cell transplantation. But I guess more importantly, by 2003, the stage was now set for the final work. 
working independently and in parallel, Sakaguchi and Ramsdell's groups decisively linked the two great discoveries. They showed that the FOXP3 is selectively expressed in the regulatory T cells, with the FOXP3 being what's known as a transcription factor. This is a master control that determines the cell's fate and its function. And the expression of FOXP3 is required for the development of Tregs, with Sakaguchi's team even showing something that nobody knew before. You can force a normal T cell to express FOXP3 and then convert them into a Treg as a result. And they also obviously showed that those scruffy mice did not have any of these T-Rex cells, which is why they all died from the autoimmune diseases. And this was a monumental discovery. It basically suggested that the absence of functional T-Rex, which were all controlled by a single gene, was sufficient enough to completely break down the entire immune system. And specifically break down immune tolerance. And crucially, this seemed to apply to both mice and men. In essence, confirming the existence of peripheral immune tolerance, or a system that controls a lot of these potentially dangerous T cells that can maybe attack our own body, with Sakaguchi eventually referring to them as peacekeepers of the immune system. Their only job is to actively suppress the immune system and prevent self-destruction. Or it was later discovered that they also help shut down immune response once the infection is cleared and once the virus or bacteria is eliminated. So basically their other job is preventing extra inflammation or overreaction of the immune system. And so the discovery by these three researchers profoundly influenced our understanding of the immune system and most importantly discovered a crucial gene, actually one single gene, that seems to control and change everything. With the discovery of FOXP3 launching a highly dynamic expanding research field. Needless to say, this led to some major discoveries in regards to human health and obviously potential treatments for many different autoimmune diseases. And right now there are generally two main therapeutic directions. Either strengthening Tregs or weakening and depleting Tregs. And this usually depends on the type of the autoimmune disease. For example, for type 1 diabetes or different types of bowel diseases, where the immune system is just way too active, the goal is to increase the activity of these Tregs by basically first identifying the patient's T-Rex, usually by getting samples from the blood, and then trying to clone them outside of the body and re-injecting them just like it was done with these mice before. And it turns out that by re-injecting T-Rex from your own body, almost instantly improves the condition. In terms of research, something similar is also done on various transplants because T-Rex can also be used to prevent the body from rejecting transplants as well. And as of 2025, there are now over 200 clinical trials underway trying to find treatments for different conditions, including something as common as asthma that can also be treated the same way. But on the opposite side of the spectrum, certain conditions, including certain tumors or even HIV, can actually be controlled by reducing T-Rex function because high activity from these cells sometimes limits the clearance of the virus or prevents the destruction of tumors. And so in other words, the discovery from these three scientists has been absolutely monumental when it comes to modern medicine. It's given us fundamental understanding of molecular and cellular mechanisms and helps us understand how one single gene seems to control the immune response, keeping it balanced and keeping it in check. With this very persistent multi-decade investigation, revolutionizing immunology and defining this crucial mechanism of peripheral immune tolerance. And of course, teaching us so much more about our own biology. And so in this case, once again, they definitely deserve the prize. This was one of the most monumental and important discoveries in human immunology or in physiology in general, and has definitely saved countless lives. And hopefully now you know why they won the award and what all of these studies were about. But if you'd like to find out more about the Nobel Prize in Physics or the award from the last year, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Anyway, Congratulations to these three scientists. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the show on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining channel membership that grants you early access and a few additional videos. You can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.